Hi everyone, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here. Recently, we talked about the Aston microphone's origin, which is this uh, chunky little uh, large diaphragm condenser that could. Today, we're talking about its more kind of clear, precise counterpart, which is the newly released Starlight, with the funky head and the laser and everything. So we'll get talking about this. So this is a small diaphragm condenser. It's not the most expensive one I've ever seen, it's not the cheapest either. And the sound that you can get from it is really quite clear and it's really kind of honest and accurate. Uh, that's the short version of this review. Also, cool laser inbuilt, which I'm not going to shine directly into the lens because I don't want to damage my lenses. And uh, it's also got loads of switches on the side for different voices, different levels of cut. Uh, different levels of pad and it's got this funky sintered head on top and that's the short version of the review so um, how does it sound let's do that and then we'll talk about uh, the details of it afterwards so here it is being used as drum overheads firstly in its modern voice then its vintage voice then the hybrid mode <laughs> The other application that I would generally tend to use, or two applications I would tend to use these, either as room microphones. So here this is in the uh, orange four-stroke bass review that we did uh, for the bass amp. Uh, firstly, without the starlight, so just the close mics, then the room mics, which are these, then just these, just quickly back to back. And also here's a quick demo of these being used on acoustic guitar as well because that's the third place that I would use small diaphragm condensers. Sounds great to me, and all of those are with just straight no EQ, nice and stock. So, large diaphragm condensers like the Origin have got these big capsules and they, you use them to get these kind of flattering kind of sounds, you know, warmer vocals, richer this, nicer that. Uh, small diaphragm condensers you tend to see used in applications where you want that very straight ahead sound, where it's not got too much... Uh, sweetening going on so you don't end up with like nasty presence peaks you don't end up with that harshness that you quite often get you'll usually get a very realistic low end and a very kind of clear up to super high end on these things uh, the downsides are if you try and use it as a vocal mic without a pop shield usually they're very sensitive to that uh, there's a lot of kind of nasty popping and that kind of thing going on but that's not an application that I would use any small diaphragm condenser on uh, so the design of this, when I first saw these, I thought that there was kind of like a protective cap on the end that you were supposed to pull off and I'm glad I didn't 
because that would be a good way to destroy one of these. This is the head. It's what's called a sintered head. Apparently, it's a design that was around a lot in the 70s and then just kind of fell out of fashion for some reason. Uh, the way that it's designed, it's got all these little metal balls arranged in such a way that the sound can get through perfectly well, but that also makes it quite kind of transparent and also a little bit rugged, which is a good combination. It's one of the reasons that it sounds so acoustically transparent, if you will, that a lot of the kind of the meshes or guards that you put across mics like this will cause a little bit of a, a weirdness in the top end, or they'll muffle things slightly, or they'll cause a bit of extra kind of nastiness somewhere that, that doesn't seem quite right. And then if you make a diaphragm that doesn't have that protection, it leaves it vulnerable. So this seems like a very clever compromise. And as you just heard from the, the sound demos there, it sounds very clear and open. Uh, I would say that on the, the lower price, the main competitor for this might be something like an SE Electronics SE1A. And on the upper side of the competition is something like a Neumann KM184, which is kind of the, uh, the newer version of the older KM84s, which used to be for a lot of big studios, the go-to small diaphragm condenser. Now, as far as I can tell, the voice switch on here makes this microphone sound more like, say, the KM84, the vintage version, or the KM184, which is the modern version, which is a bit more of a clear top end. It's not a massive difference. It's not like lifting the veil off between a ribbon and one of these. It's subtle, but subtle can be exactly what you need, especially if you're trying to record something where you use as little EQ as possible, if you want something to be as natural as it can be, with the old mantra, get it right at the source. And then hybrid is somewhere in between, so if you thought that maybe the source, you maybe you're recording drum cymbals, maybe you're recording cymbals and on modern mode you find that it's too bright, it's quite piercing, but if you take it down to vintage mode, all the definition's lost, so maybe the hybrid mode gets you there and finds the sound you were after. That's exactly what that voice switch is for. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you're playing, tracking something like an acoustic guitar in context of a mix and you find that on vintage mode it sounds quite nice, but it's not cutting through, you could switch to modern mode, etc, etc, etc. One of the interesting things here is the laser. The laser, not pointing that at the lens again, but just kind of roughly close, uh, the laser doesn't change the sound. The laser is powered by the phantom power as well, so you don't need any batteries or anything, which is cool. Uh, the laser is so that you can point this from a distance, this microphone, with its head perfectly aligned at whatever your source is, or say you've got uh, a particular pickup pattern that you wanted to make. You can make sure, if this is in a strange place, let's say on drum overheads these were above where you are, you can't exactly get up on a really tall ladder and look down the microphone to make sure it's pointed exactly where you wanted it to be. But if you're obsessed about things like phase alignment, time alignment, which I know makes for, especially in multi-microphone configurations, a much better uh, pickup, a much better stereo image, a much better solidness of sound, you'll need two things. You'll need a tape measure, and you'll also need something like this laser. Because you may find that even with a tape measure, if you've got two of these microphones, and you measure the distance between, let's say on a drum kit, the middle of the snare drum is usually a good place to be the center of a stereo image. So if you measure from there with a tape measure, you might have this one six feet away and you might have the other one six feet away. Uh, but if it turns out that from the angle you were measuring it, you thought it was pointed exactly at the snare, but it wasn't, it was slightly off and the other one was slightly off, you might find that your stereo image doesn't quite translate the way you thought it should. Whereas if you use the laser and like get that little dot from the laser exactly pointed at that middle of the snare drum on both mics, you are 100% guaranteed, if you use that tape measure to get the distance the same, that your stereo image will be bang on every time. And I really like that repeatable method that you get with this. Moving on, I've said before that generally I don't like using the uh, high-pass filters in uh, inbuilt-in microphones, but if I'm forced to, 
this particular mic has two options. It's got kind of a gentle filter and a really harsh one, which depending on your needs, say this is in a situation where there's a lot of low end rumble going on, you could quite harshly cut that out and that could be quite useful for you. Also, there's a 10 dB uh, cut and a 20 dB cut as well. So if you're miking a, a drum overhead, you might use the 10 dB cut. If the drum is absolutely wailing on the, the snare drum and it's really echoing, you might need the 20 dB. But that means that you can take the level down before it hits the circuitry. And so it won't clip and distort inside the mic. Uh, it will be, even if you have to make up the gain on the preamp, much more sonically accurate, which in a lot of high noise situations really would be what you want. You don't want the microphone to be distorting. You'd want more pleasing distortion, if any, uh, coming from, say, a vintage preamp down the line. Or you might want a really clean preamp and not have any distortion at all. If that's your thing, these work for that as well. Also, the stereo pair that I got from Aston uh, comes with a pair of these Rycoat Lyre shock mounts, and these are absolutely amazing. These uh, don't have that uh, that classic kind of spiderweb thing going on, so there's no replaceable parts, there's no need. And the mic just sits in there, nice and solid, and it seems to be the kind of modern way of dealing with shock mounting that's so much more... Um, solid and reliable. I have spent countless hours of studio time where someone's knocked a, a, a shock mount basket and I've had to reattach the uh, you know the elastic or replace the elastic as it gets worn out. With this there isn't any so they also come with standard clips as well and it's, it's probably worth noting it's got this kind of funky covering on the end where the XLR goes so it looks a bit like something out of Star Trek. But yeah, at £450, I think it was, for a stereo pair, I think that's a pretty decent price. Um, if you go for, say, the, the Neumann KM184s, you're looking at paying twice that. The lower end, something like the SE1As, are more like £180 for two, I think it was, something like that. Um, don't quote me, I'll put that uh, on the screen, I'll check that at time of editing. And... This sounds, to me, worlds above the lower end, and it sounds pretty much on par with the high end. Um, I don't, unfortunately, have those to test today, so you'll kind of have to take my word for it. Or don't. It's just a review, hey. But the fact that this has the voice switch on here means that it's so much more versatile than either of the other two mics that I've mentioned. And if you need a small diaphragm condenser, this is a great option. Uh, again, full disclosure, I've not been paid by Aston to do this review. They sent me these to see what I think. And if I thought they were terrible, I would either say they were terrible or I'd just not do a review and send them back. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, to camera, say that something's good when it's not. Uh, I would stake my reputation on it. And yeah, so Aston Starlights, these are now my small diaphragm condenser of choice where I've replaced other brands. I don't actually have a set of the Neumanns of my own. I rent them whenever I need them, but I can't see myself renting a KM84s or 184s anymore. Don't need them. I've got these, and these are great. I think that is a good end to this review. So thanks for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, stick around for some more videos. We've uh, we've got the uh, Audion ID22 and 44. Uh, May have already released one of those videos because I'm kind of uh, scheduling edit the, editing these slightly out of order. But yes, there's a lot coming for the channel. I'm going to be talking about subwoofers as well and why you'd want one in the studio or even two uh, because that's something that I've recently worked with Adam on or Adam Audio for. The middle uh, monitors that you see behind me are Adam A7Xs and I've been using those for years and I've started using their sub 8s as well. Uh, so that's worth talking about very soon. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos on the Raspberry Pi for audio production. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do more videos about Reaper. Um, I've got a new guitar cab coming. I'm doing a video about reamping guitars as well. So there's so much going on. It's crazy. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here. 
or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.